Hello, and welcome to today's webcast, NetApp All Flash FAS Solution, What It Is, What It Isn't, brought to you by Datalink. I'm Danielle Moore, Marketing Manager at Datalink, and will be your moderator today. Before we begin, I wanted to cover a few housekeeping items. This webcast is designed to be interactive between you and the presenters. The webcast console you are looking at can be completely customized. You can resize or move any of the windows that you have open. At the bottom of your audience console are multiple application widgets you can use. If you have any question during the webcast, you can click on the Q&A widget at the bottom and submit your question. All questions from this webcast will be captured. If you are experiencing any technical difficulties, please visit the webcast help guide by clicking on the question mark icon below the presentation window. The help guide covers common technical issues. Today's presenter will be Datalink Lead Data Center Architect, Chris Capuzza. Chris will provide an overview of NetApp All Flash Solution Attributes, Considerations, and Lessons Learned by Datalink. You will take away information that you can use to assess, administer, and maximize the value of NetApp-based flash storage in your environment. I would now like to turn this presentation over to our presenter, Chris. Chris, the floor is yours. Good morning and good afternoon, everyone, and, and thank you for joining. Uh, again, my name is Chris Capusta, uh, Lead Data Center Architect based out of Dallas, Texas with Datalink. And we just wanted to take some time this morning, as, as Danielle mentioned, and walk through the NetApp All Flash FAS solution. Uh, so let's, uh, let's start off with, with the basics here. What is, what is AFF? Uh, what is All Flash FAS? There's a lot of marketing out there that, that makes it sound like it is a new product in the NetApp portfolio. And, and in some ways it is, but when you get down to the root of it, um, an All Flash FAS is the same existing FAS 8000 hardware that uh, we, we have uh, deployed in a lot of data centers today. Uh, there is a front, front bezel change that indicates whether or not we're looking at an AFF versus uh, traditional FAS, and uh, in the future there may be some uh, kind of aesthetic changes there. Uh, but otherwise, it's the, the same FAS 8000 hardware that we, we know and love today. Uh, under the hood is where a lot of the changes have taken place. So there's a lot of data on tap changes, cluster data on tap changes that have, have made it optimized for Flash, and we'll be taking a walk through some of those today. And uh, NetApp has used the technology and, and lessons learned, so to speak, from their Flash Ray line uh, to bring those optimizations and enhancements to data on tap. Uh, some, some other software changes you'll see is that uh, the premium software bundles and all protocols are now included with an all flash FAS. So that means you get uh, the, the multi-protocol functionality of, of the NetApp line that we know today, such as uh, SIFS, Fiber Channel, uh, Fiber Channel SCOE, iSCSI, and, and NFS, as well as the Snap Manager tools set, uh, Snap Protect, Snap Restore, uh, all the feature functionality you would expect from a, a NetApp solution. And really, when it comes down to it, all flash FAS is a new personality for data on tap. And, and that's what triggers a lot of the enhancements and uh, uh, functionality that we'll be taking a look at today. So just some important notes uh, when you're looking at an all flash FAS. Uh, it may not have spinning disk attached. So when, you, when this all flash FAS personality is enabled and it comes that way from the factory, uh, anytime you attempt to attach any spinning disk to the system, the, the system will essentially reject it and, and say, you know, basically, I'm an all flash FAS. I'm not allowed to accept any time spinning disk. However, within one of the, the, the nice functionality or features of this is it may be combined inside of an existing cluster data on tap cluster um, to expand out to a flash node. And this is where we really see some some kind of uh, some of the advanced feature sets of the all flash FAS is I can now not only have hybrid nodes like we're used to in a NetApp C dot cluster, but now I can also have a hybrid cluster in general. So my traditional spinning disk nodes um, serving their functions, and then for my top tier applications and areas where uh, the enhancements and speed of flash makes sense, I can have all flash nodes inside of my existing C dot clusters, and then do things like ball moves behind the scenes to transition my workloads non-disruptively uh, between those different nodes as, as, my, as my needs or workload changes dictate. Uh, no more per controller software license costs. Again, as we covered on the last slide there, um, there is the, all the premium flash bundle is included with the all flash FAS. 
Uh, it's all capacity-based uh, Flash Bundle. And we'll talk about a little bit of the Flash enhancements in Data on Tab 8.3 and 8.3.1 today and some of the work that NetApp's done behind the scenes to really optimize uh, Data on Tap and, and bring it from a more of a spinning disk system to an all-Flash system. So I wanted to just take a second before we dive into the rest of that there, just talk a little bit about where does AFF fit into the, the NetApp portfolio and in particular the NetApp Flash portfolio. Uh, so today we have our, our data on tap side of the house, uh, our traditional FAS models that we're used to as, as well as the new all flash FAS models. Uh, and then we have the E-Series line of the house, the Ingenio purchase that NetApp made a few uh, years back. And, uh, the EF series that uh, go along with that, uh, the all flash uh, um, forms of the E series, if you will. And this is really where we see the the different uh, the different types of of all flash models, be it FAS or or EF, positioned inside of the data center today. Uh, so environments where I have mixed applications, heavy virtualization, especially virtual desktops areas where I'm looking to extend my data fabric out into the cloud and, and really take advantage of some of the storage efficiencies and features that come along with, with data on tap today. Again, we talked about uh, how things like uh, Snap Manager solutions are included and uh, snapshots and replications and everything else, Snap Vault, all of the different uh, data protection technologies and efficiencies that exist inside of clustered on tap today. Obviously, all of those are extended to the uh, to the AFF model line as well. Uh, where we see more of the E-series and EF-series, if you will, uh, very dedicated application type of deployments. So very performance-intensive databases, bare metal applications, um, again, the, the more of the, the value-based buying decisions, if you will, uh, losing some of the features that you would expect uh, inside of clustered ONTAP, you know, that comes at a, a lower cost as well in the EF-series line. Um, and then areas where I just need high density, uh, compact form factors, and, and very low latency, high performing um, flash disk. So let's talk about uh, some of the enhancements that we've mentioned that uh, uh, Data on Tap has made uh, as they bring this AFF uh, model set to market here. So Data on Tap is now optimized for flash. And we'll talk a little bit more in depth about this, but basically they've, they've got, uh, when you enable that AFF personality, there are now flash-specific read path optimizations uh, that deliver consistent low latency that you would expect from an all-flash array. Uh, there is now parallel threading of I.O. that lets you handle more requests at once, so basically Waffle taking better use of the multi-core technology that you'll see in a lot of the controllers here in the 8000 series. And then uh, coalesce writes to, to free blocks and maximize performance and, and even help that flash last a little bit longer, uh, preventing wear and some of the other um, uh, issues that can, that can affect flash storage. Uh, data reduction, there's been some data efficiency enhancements inside of AFF as well, especially in the 8.3 and 8.3.1 uh, ONTAP releases. So deduplication and compression are now in line, and there is... Um, uh, zero byte detection deduplication as well, so we avoid writing the, the zeros, if you will, to the flash disk, which not only help from a performance perspective, but also help with the longevity of the flash drives themselves. And then SSD partitioning. Um, so data uh, automatic disk partitioning came in 8.3 and 8.3.1, and what that allows us to do is, uh, for those familiar with traditional CDOT clusters today, where I lose three disks per controller uh, for the data on tap uh, kind of operating functions and replication databases with automatic disk partitioning, that's now spread in small chunks across all of the disks in the system, or at least a few first few trays, if you will. And what that basically means is I no longer pay that penalty up front uh, for data on tap from a capacity perspective of, of losing three drives per controller. So I spread that utilization and capacity out over more drives and that just gives me better efficiency and better use of the, the capacity I paid for out of the uh, out of the all flash system. And then the, the data fabric, um, so being able to extend my uh, my workloads not only between flash and, and hard disk drives that I may have in the data center today, but as I start to develop a cloud strategy, it's, it's the, the kind of the NetApp data fabric story, if you will, that goes along with uh, data on tap. 
being able to move those workloads to the cloud. Uh, so really, I not only have a, a hybrid model internally of spinning disk versus uh, flash storage, but also I can now easily transport that data uh, to cloud-ready environments and extend my, extend my reach into the cloud, if you will. Uh, and then dramatic application acceleration, um, basically the benefits of flash in general there. Flash is faster than spinning hard drives, and uh, that allows me to consolidate workloads and just uh, have better response times back to my application owners and ultimately the, the customers in, inside of the data center. So I wanted to just spend a couple minutes here uh, talking about uh, AFF and the, the C dot story, if you will. Uh, so all flash FAS and cluster data on tap, we talked a little bit about this on a previous slide, but really this allows me to, uh, again, take advantage of the multi-protocol functionality that uh, we've, we've known and expect from the NetApp system today, and then extend my existing C dot clusters with flash nodes um, to build a, a hybrid cluster. So again, using technologies built into CDOT like um, transparent ball moves, volume moves behind the scenes, it allows me as the administrator um, to determine where does it make sense or which workload, application workload makes sense to run on Flash today. I can non-disruptively move those from my uh, traditional spinning disks or even hybrid arrays I may have today with Flash pools out to an all-Flash tier. And then, again, have that flexibility throughout the, the year. So if there's certain times of the year where flash workloads make sense, uh, I can move it to my flash tier, and then when I need to, to move it back to spinning disk to save on that flash capacity, yeah, I have those options as well. Uh, so data mobility is a, a big, uh, big part of that. Uh, data protection as well. So one nice thing, uh, because it's data on tap under the hood, uh, in my production data centers today, I can have all flash FAS nodes running uh, serving those production volumes, but maybe I have a cold data center somewhere where um, you know, maybe it doesn't make sense to have Flash there just yet because it's only you know, emergency use only, if you will. Uh, I can replicate your traditional um, cluster data on tap volumes running on spinning disk. And so from a cost perspective, I don't have to have Flash everywhere or the same model of Flash everywhere, if you will. It's all snap mirror under the hood. Um, so I can replicate that much like I replicate any other NetApp system today. And then the uh, consistent operations for NAS and, NAS, NAS and SAN, excuse me, uh, application integration uh, through the SNAP Manager tools uh, that we talked about earlier, and then all of the features that we get with clustered data on tap today. So secure multi-tenancy, QoS, uh, I, can, I can scale out my clusters and continue using those functions non-disruptively um, through the power of clustered data on tap as well as um, all flashbacks. We mentioned a little bit of the read optimizations as well uh, that uh, NetApp's put into ONTAP 8.3 and, and 8.3.1. So I wanted to just uh, kind of visualize that here and talk a little bit about that. Uh, traditionally, ONTAP has been very much optimized for the timings of spinning disk. And with, with introducing Flash into that uh, operating environment, we obviously don't have the penalties and, and wait times that we did uh, from a spinning disk perspective, so that allowed NetApp to go back and say, how can we basically optimize on tap to, to skip some of the, the built-in, I'll say latency for lack of a better term, or built-in wait times that we have to account for uh, from a spinning disk perspective. So you can see the traditional cluster data on tap 8.2 model there, uh, where requests would come in from the network layer, uh, controller would pass that off to Waffle, uh, and which would go to the RAID layer and storage layer, and then we'd follow that path back up the stack here. Storage would return that to RAID, RAID would return that to Waffle, Waffle would return that to the network, RAID, and then that response would go back out to the uh, application or server that made that read request. When we look at 8.3, uh, we can start to bypass certain functions here uh, on response. So now RAID can return the, the read information um, directly to uh, the network dblade, which can then directly go uh, back to the client. And then in E3.1, NetApp's taken that even further, where we can skip the RAID layer almost entirely here, both on the request as well as the response. Uh, and there we're seeing a 300% a increase in 8K read I.O. through these optimizations. So kind of under the hood from a read perspective, just to, again, to, to account for the, the timings and acceleration that Flash brings to the market, um, these are some of the changes that NetApp's made under the hood uh, in 8.3 and 8.3.1 to to really optimize data on tap for Flash and take advantage of the, 
uh, the, the lack of penalty, I'll say in this case, that we, we don't have to pay from a non-spinning media. And then on the capacity perspective, uh, clustered ONTAP 8.3 has brought about uh, uh, root data SSD partitioning for all flash FAS. Now, I will point out that uh, if you do have a spinning disk array uh, running 8.3, uh, you can also do um, you can also do uh, advanced disk partitioning for for spinning disk as well. So this is not necessarily a AFF um, specific feature. However, with, with the cost of flash versus spinning disk, this becomes more important in the, the SSD realm. Uh, so up to 24 SSDs per node can be shared for the root and data aggregates, and this uh, improves storage efficiency uh, up to 20%. Again, instead of paying that <clears throat> free disk penalty per controller for data on tap, uh, we can now spread the, the data and the system, um, the root partitions, if you will, over multiple disks and uh, not only distribute that from a better data protection perspective, but also uh, we use, we pay a much smaller penalty, if you will. It basically works out to be about 250 gigabytes per controller um, versus you know, up to multiple terabytes in the traditional data on tap sense. And then a couple of the storage efficiency enhancements as well. Um, so deduplication, uh, NetApp had dedu primary and secondary storage deduplication for quite some time now. Uh, where it starts to become interesting in the 8.3 and uh, 8.3.1 realm is we're starting to move to always on inline deduplication in the, in the AFF models today. Uh, so we can, it's the traditional 4K waffle blocks that we're deduplicating. Um, it can be post-process scheduled if you need to. However, in the AFF realm, we can also run it inline. And um, what, uh, what what NetApp is claiming now is there is no longer a CPU penalty from inline deduplication on AFF models. And then to further enhance the um, to further enhance the life of Flash in general, um, it supports that inline zero data detection. So it skips writing the zero blocks to Flash. It only writes the blocks that contain actual data, uh, and that just avoids extra writes, which can uh, somewhat affect the lifespan of those Flash drives. And uh, let me just pause here for a second. I, I see a comment that uh, it looks like the right side of the presentation window is cut off here. Danielle, I don't know if we can adjust that on the fly or if it's something I need to change. Yeah, I don't know how to fix it, so you might, if there's something you can do, that would be great. Okay, I apologize for that, everyone. Uh, as we walk through here today, I'll try and see um, if there's a way to fix that. So alongside the um, storage efficiencies that deduplication bring to the house, uh, we also have some data compression enhancements in 8.3.1. Um, so um, all flash fast support for data compression. Um, there is adaptive compression, so it's a, an 8 size, 8K compression group size, and um, it, the startup compression groups are aligned with 8K boundaries, so from the beginning of the file. Uh, basically, compression is in line now as well. Um, so that doesn't bring some read performance improvement, but we do have inline compression with no controller, little to no controller penalty in 831. And then um, that is also extended down into the flash pool uh, integration. So reading caching and, and write caching of compressed blocks, uh, and that's uh, on both adaptive and, and secondary compression. Uh, so much like deduplication enhancements in the AFF model, um, we also have some data compression enhancements as well. Again, now those technologies are both always on and always in line, which you would expect from and you see from most of the flash vendors today. Um, so we have uh, kind of that feature parity on the NetApp side of the house as well. And then um, what I wanted to just touch on here, and I understand it's cut off on the right side, so I, I apologize for that. But uh, when we look at uh, performance metrics, and uh, I just wanted to kind of close out here from a performance perspective and just show some of the performance data that we're seeing and NetApp seeing from the all flash FAS. So all flash FAS 8080, uh, this is a, a eight node cluster that this was run against. And you can see we, we've got just shy of 
700,000 IOPS here at a 1.23 millisecond average response time. And uh, that score at a number five in the uh, SBC top 10 by performance. And it was the second best application response time. And um, again, in the top five from, from that scoring perspective. So basically, all flash fads, you can expect um, scalable low latency performance and, uh, and really be able to address those high performance sand workloads. Again, so just some of the op optimizations that we've seen just from incorporating Flash itself, but also from the enhancements inside of uh, cluster data on tap, uh, being able to extend our existing CDOT clusters and um, uh, add those Flash nodes, um, NetApp is now ready to deliver those, those low latency, high performance application workloads that uh, we would expect from an all Flash array today. So again, I apologize, that's cut off on the right-hand side there, but um, um, just wanted to point out some of these uh, performance metrics as well. So I know we've, we've got a little bit of time here, but um, that's basically what I wanted to cover from an AFF product overview. Uh, we do have our uh, question and answer window open. Um, if there's any questions we can answer, um, please let me know, and uh, we'll, we'll be here to address those as needed. Okay, and, and one question I one question I saw come in here, um, and we actually get asked this quite a bit, is um, if I put in all flash FAS inside of my primary data center, do I need one inside of a secondary data center for replication? Um, so I, I think we talked a little bit about this earlier, but um, the the short answer is no. You don't need flash on both sides, and and I know that's a that's a um, that's a situation that a lot of other flash vendors have to work with in today is if I put one in production, I need one in my, my DR side of the house as well to replicate to. Uh, from a NetApp perspective, we're dealing with snap mirror under the hood. So I can replicate to any other FAS system today, be it a hybrid array, be it a traditional spinning disk array. Uh, as long as I have a NetApp on the other side, regardless of the, uh, regardless of the um, underlying this technology, uh, I can snap mirror my data from primary to secondary and, and so on and so forth um, using snap mirror technology. And then uh, one of the other questions that just came in regarding 8.3 advanced disk partition. Uh, is there a migration path to implement for cluster drives that's coming from 8.x on other platforms? So being the bearer of bad news, unfortunately today there is not. Um, advanced disk partitioning is set up, uh, if, if you order an 8.3 system from the factory today, uh, it will come with advanced disk partitioning automatically enabled. And again, that's, that's from a both, um, <coughs> excuse me, both from an all flash fast perspective as well as a traditional spinning disk perspective. Um, if I have a traditional system today or an in-place system today, I should say that I'm upgrading to 8.3 or 8.3.1 from, say, 8.2 or earlier, uh, I cannot convert that system to an ADP system. Uh, I will, unfortunately, today have to uh, wipe the array and, and redo setup to take advantage of ADP in those systems that have already been deployed inside of the data center. Okay, and uh, it, it doesn't look like we have any other questions coming in. So, uh, Danielle, I'll, I'll turn this back over to you uh, for any closing remarks. Great, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for attending today's webcast. An on-demand version of this webcast will be available within two to three days. You will receive an email notification once the recording is available. Thanks again for participating.